Peace, Moors, and all other English-speaking peoples. This is Malik the Sheik with a short message for you in the form of this video and slideshow to demonstrate some of the things that I believe Moors are supposed to know if they are to know themselves. They also should know other sciences like astrology, astronomy, things of that nature. But anyway, this is a short video. Get out your pens and pads, take notes, because this is something crucial for the edification of Moors. Peace. Yes, good afternoon. I mean, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to make a statement. I heard a lot of questions being asked about uh, Noble Drali, the status of the Moors and whatnot. Uh, basically, um, uh, what people actually have to notice is that this land was already landmarked thousands of years ago. And unbeknownst to a lot of people, prior to uh, what we call the Bible or the uh, Torah and uh, Moses and things of that nature, this actually right here is known as the land called Ta'asar, uh, Egypt of the West. This is the farthest, most extreme west of the ancient Kemetic Moorish Empire. And a lot of people don't know that as far back as 25,000 B.C., this whole entire Western Hemisphere was colonized by what was known as biblically Cush and Kemet. So, you know, first and foremost, you know, before people actually can really receive anything, you know, under the Moors, we always say you have to proclaim your nationality. You have to correct your status. Other than that, if you don't correct your status, you're stateless. And under the law of statelessness, under Admiralty Maritime Law, anybody can claim you. It's just like a piece of driftwood floating on the ocean. Any ship can ride by, pick you up, patch up their hole, and keep rolling. So I'm saying that to say make sure that you people understand that nationality is the order of the day. And not only that, a majority of the Europeans over here that actually think that they're white, white is not a nationality. I hate to, I hate to break the bad news to you. It's not a nationality. It's a status. It doesn't bear a flag. It does not bear a language. It does not bear one free national name same as black and African-American. So the best thing I would suggest is that, you know, well, first and foremost, I'm going to tell you that the system lied to you. That's number one. Second thing I would actually say is that you need to correct your uh, status by actually doing the DNA blood test because the majority of y'all that was actually taught that you were white, when you go back and do some DNA research, you're going to find out that you was lied to on that as well. You're going to find out that you do have a lot of y'all, probably about 85%, actually have more blood coursing through your veins. So what's going to, what that's going to do, that's going to put you back in. If you deal with the Bible, it puts you right back underneath what they call the fourth commandment, under thy father and thy mother, so you will be at home. And uh, as far as Noble Drew Ali, this is what I want to say. You have to understand the 1928 Pan-American Conference and what actually Drew Ali did. Drew Ali actually, when he had came uh, to the conference and his proper status, um, Drew Ali was the only one there from the Western Hemisphere in correct status. And all the nations, Paraguay, Uruguay, uh, Colombia, Brazil, Honduras, uh, Panama, Cuba, and all these various nations, they were under the title of Hispanic or Latin American. So once again, bears no nationality. So there was only one person there in correct status, which was Noble Drew Ali. And when he came with the true history of the land, which actually explained the mounds and the pyramids that's over here in the West, and explaining to them that this is actually Tarsar, the land of Osiris, or the western half of the Egyptian empire, which actually later became uh, 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 passed on to what was known as the Carthaginians or the, the Phoenicians, uh, the Numidians, which later became known as the Moroccans, Algerians, Tunisians, and Libyans. Uh, uh, this land underneath uh, the Moors later became known as Maghrib al-Aqsa, or the farthest, most extreme west. So it was nothing but basically the same people just coming over here in successive ways ever since back 25, 30,000 years ago. And we're not even going to talk about the migrations of the first people that they found over here, dealing with the Australoids and the Twa and the Khoisan peoples. So we've been over here for quite some time. 
Uh, when he brought this history to the land, by default, they had to give it to him. And when he filed his document in Cook County Record of Deeds Office under the Torrance Title Registry System, you need to understand what the Torrance Registry System is. That is what caused the bankruptcy of 1929. So they've been owing us ever since 1929. If you have a birth certificate, everything that they predicated off of you, you can go and get that and all of the hypothecation that they have done with that birth certificate. It belongs to you. It is yours. But they're not going to give you anything. They don't have to give you anything if your status is not corrected. You're a slave. Slaves don't get anything. And I'm not here trying to bust anybody's bubble. I'm just here to give you the facts and the truth and the law. And I'm just clearing up some questions and some things that I felt needed to be addressed. Now, once you do that, underneath international law, once your status is corrected, they have to give it back to you. Go and get a certified. I got copies of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship coming in from the archives of the United States under certified seal. Under Article 3 of the treaty, they have to give you everything. Now, being that they're on the land, everything that's predicated from the land, land rights, mineral rights, water rights, air, sky, space rights, they can't pay the moors because we want substance. We want gold, silver, platinum, palladium, rhodium, and you can't dig it up out of our land to pay us. So where are you going to get it from? Well, here's the thing. Every corporation that's operating on the land, they owe the moors profit sharing. That's how it okay. actually goes, because it is against equity to squat and freehold without paying the days your landlords in freehold. Correct your status, and if you have pensions and things of that nature, if you've been raised as white, I would strongly suggest you get a DNA test to see if you got our blood coursing through your veins. We've been misnomered as Cherokee when our true name was Anianuia. We've been called Choctaw, which is French. We've been called Chickasaw, which is French. We've been called Washita, which is Spanish and French understanding what it's actually Wushashakthun. We've been called a lot of things, but we are known as Moors. And that goes all the way back to when the uh, Romans and the Greeks were dealing with the Mauryan dynasties of India under Chandragupta, King Chandragupta all the way to when they came down into the land of Ethiopia, where actually was uh, the land of Punt uh, under the Candace Queens, and also Man Tamare, which later became uh, Greco-Romanist uh, Egypt. Anybody that had dark skin was known as Imaros Moros. And then later on, it became known as M-O-H-R-S, Moors in Germany, M-O-R-S, Moors in, in, uh, uh, in the English language, uh, M U uh, R. Uh, in French, Moor, and uh, that's what we was known as all the way up to the 17th, uh, 18th century. And then they denationalized us under Negro, black, colored, those things under the black codes of 1724 and onward, and all the way up to the Jim Crow laws. If you go to timemagazine.com and do an archive search, you will find out that they were calling us black all the way up to the 1945. It's right there in the Time Magazine archive. So they know who we are, and they know what they owe. So, like I said, when you correct your status, everything, they have to give it back to you. And well, this, is, this is how it's going to actually go. Once you correct your status and you force their hands, then the United States is actually going to take it from the corporations because the United States doesn't have anything. It's the bankers in these corporations that actually has your assets seized up. Yes, I just want to say to the last caller, he is right on point. But one thing he did leave out um, – there is no such thing as a white race. The Moors dressed in all white, and when they dressed in all white, they did that to say uh, thank you to the ancestors that had already crossed over. The, uh, the Caucasian here came from Congress Mountain, and uh, to prove it is, they have a Magna Carta, 1215 A.D., that states that they were the first Negroes. And if they're going to put your head, look it up. It's the Magna Carta, 1215 A.D. Now, Back to the landowners, you have a Supreme Court rule of 191 that states that the United States cannot own land, and the only landowners have to be a LRB. That goes right back to the Moors. Don't, don't take my word. You can check it out. I'm through talking. Thank you. W this has been a Malik the Sheik presentation.